in today's lecture we will talk about the sedative and hypnotics and uh, remember the same topic is given with another name in different books okay in some books it is sedative and hypnotics and in some other books it is angiolytics and hypnotics so what are the sedative and angiolytics these are the drugs that if we take they will help us feel calm relax they will decrease our fear will decrease our worry anxiety etc and what are the hypnotics hypnotics are the drugs that if you take they will induce the sleep so we actually take these drugs when there is condition of insomnia so our today's lecture will include the pharmacology of the sedative and hypnotics and the general neuronal activity in conditions like fear anxiety worry insomnia etc means how our, how our neuron will react then from the same point we will just extract another point that will be the types of the gaba receptor then the structure of the GABA receptor, then the mechanism of actions of the drugs that we will study in the pharmacology and then we will study the dose dependent mechanism of action and in the end we will study the clinical uses of the sedative and hypnotics. So let's start from the very first point that is the pharmacology. Now here in the pharmacology I will just tell you the names of the drugs and how to remember the names of the drugs. The real mechanism will be studied in the mechanism of actions okay. So let's start from the drugs. The very first uh, benzodiazepines. The drugs included in the benzodiazepines are the alprazolam, lorazepam, oxazepam, temazepam, and etc. So now how you will remember these names? Very simple. You have to focus the ending points of the drugs like alprazolam, oxazepam. They are ending with PAM and AM. So most of the drugs of the benzodiazepines end with PAM or AM. So that's easy now. Benzodiazepines antagonist, we just have only one drug, flumazenil, which is very easy to remember. And barbiturates uh, include the phenobarbital, secobarbital, fentobarbital, and etc. Now, barbital is somehow repetitive word, okay, repetitive pronunciation. So, by this pronunciation, barbital, you can remember the drugs of the barbiturates. Other hypnotic drugs, you have to remember these like zeliplon, zolpidom, and remelteon, etc. These are the drugs that are placed in some other group. You can say miscellaneous, which are given the name other hypnotic drugs. So you, can, you have to remember these drugs. Now our next point will be the general neuronal activity in the conditions like uh, when it is anxiety, fear, worry, insomnia, how our neurons will react. So from the presynaptic neuron, a certain neurotransmitter will be released. That neurotransmitter will come and will bind to a specific receptor present on the postsynaptic neuron. As the neurotransmitter binds to the receptor, this receptor will give the excitatory signal to the neuron and the neuron be will become excited. In the meanwhile, there is a kind of inhibitory mechanism also observed because we have to maintain our normal condition. We don't need to be excited. We don't need to be dull. So we have to be in a specific in a normal state. In order to provide that normal condition, here we have another neuron, known as GABAergic neuron. This GABAergic neuron will release the GABA neurotransmitter. And this GABA will come and will bind to its own specific receptor, known as GABA receptor. So when it binds to the specific receptor, what will happen to this receptor? This receptor will open a channel, which will allow the influx of the negative ions, known as chloride ions. So which will allow the chloride ions to move into the postsynaptic neuron. Now this neuron when gets inside enough negative, you know normally what is happening, outside is positive and inside is negative normally. So when there is an opening of the channel which is allowing the negative ion to come in, so then inside the cell will become more negative and you know when inside cell becomes negative, you know that this is the condition known as hyperpolarization, so which is going to inhibit the excitation. Normally it was supposed to excite the neurotransmitter from this neuron, presynaptic neuron, but here when it is excited in the meanwhile here is a activity which is going to inhibit this neuron in order to maintain a normal level so in case of anxiety fear and worry insomnia when it is abnormal i'm not talking about normal anxiety normal fear normal worry so that can be lost within uh, within a while okay within a day or two but when these conditions prolong for a number of days for a couple of days okay then what is happening then our actually the gabergic neuronal activity is somehow decreased and this activity from the presynaptic to the postsynaptic is somehow increased. So in that condition, what will happen? Somehow excitement will be observed from the presynaptic into the postsynaptic. So neuronal activity will be very, very much increased. In order to counter these effects, what will we do? 
we will take the drugs that will help us increase the GABAergic activity means we the drugs will target the GABA receptor and if we target the GABA receptor so then the GABA receptor will become open and if you open the channels of the GABA receptor like this the chloride ion which is a negative ion that will start moving in into the neuronal cell and the cell will become negative like this somehow we can counter this uh, excitement so this excitement can be somehow inhibited then then a person can say that we will become in a normal state so in order to focus this particular receptor this receptor is actually known as GABA receptor okay and this GABA receptor is of three types in the body that is A, B and C the GABA receptor A and C they are actually the inotropic receptor means they are actually having the ligand gated ion channel when ligand binds to their uh, these receptors GABA A and GABA C they will open a channel and whereas GABA B is not an inotropic it is metabotropic receptor so it is actually coupled with the G protein so it will function by means of G protein and the main function of A, B, C GABA receptors is to cause the inhibition inhibitory mechanism by different ways the GABA A, GABA C will cause the inhibition by same method whereas GABA B will cause the inhibition by different method and here in our this pharmacology lecture in case of sativin haplotics we will focus the GABA A receptor so what is the structure of a GABA A receptor? GABA A receptor is actually formed by the combination of uh, five units of proteins known as alpha, beta, gamma, delta and rho. In some other books it is mentioned that these units are actually two alpha, two beta and one gamma. When they combine together they will make a structure known as GABA receptor. So now this GABA receptor has got how many proteins units? Five. Two alpha, two beta and one gamma. And now, according to this lecture, sedative and haplotics, I will increase our discussion towards the subtypes of the alpha. That is alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. Because we have certain drugs, when they react on the alpha 1, they will cause sleep conditions. And we do have certain other drugs, when they react on the alpha 2 and alpha 3, they will cause the anti-anxiety effects. So we do have drugs that are for acting on the alpha 1, 2 and 3. So we must discuss the subtypes of the alpha, alpha 1, alpha 2 or alpha 3 also. That's it, very simple. So now let's come towards our the very important part of the topic that is the mechanism of action of the drugs, of the pharmacology of the drugs, okay? So here we have the benzodiazepines, the very first one. So what is now the mechanism of action of benzodiazepines? They are actually going to bind to the alpha and gamma units of the receptor, GABA A receptor. So here is the alpha and here is the gamma. So our benzodiazepine will bind to this receptor. Here is benzodiazepine, consider. When it binds to the receptor, what will happen to the receptor? This receptor, its affinity will be increased by means of benzodiazepines. When benzodiazepines bind, then the affinity, the ability of the receptor to bind to the GABA neurotransmitter will increase. So that is what will happen then more GABA will bind and as the more GABA will bind then what will happen as a result there will be opening of the channels and as a result chloride ion will move into the cell and the cell will become negative and you know when inside become negative it is called as hyperpolarization so which is a kind of inhibitory mechanism like this it is doing inhibition and in the pharmacology we use a two specific terms one is that when the benzodiazepines bind to the receptor it will increase the GABA receptors affinity for the GABA neurotransmitter and the next point is that this benzodiazepines when bind to the GABA receptor they will increase the frequency of the GABA receptor for the GABA neurotransmitter means then GABA neurotransmitter will bind to this particular GABA receptor time and again frequency means repetition when any event is repeating so here the GABA neurotransmitter will bind to the GABA receptor time and again like this what will happen time and again opening and closing of the channel will be observed so like this the benzodiazepines will increase the affinity as well as it will increase the frequency of the GABA receptor and the next point we have is uh, benzodiazepines antagonist and if still you are feeling confusion regarding the frequency and efficacy uh, I will make you people clear about this point in the barbiturates so first of all uh, let's come towards the benzodiazepines antagonist now we just have only one drug flumazenil which is acting as an antagonist so here are the sites for the benzodiazepines alpha and gamma our this benzodiazepine antagonist will bind to the alpha 1 so what will happen then is it it is antagonist so it will do the antagonistic effect benzodiazepine antagonist is used in a condition when there is hyperactivity observed of the benzodiazepines so we are using the benzodiazepines antagonist for the benzodiazepines 
a hyperactivity. And now let's move toward the third that is barbiturates. Now how will our these barbiturates act? They have multiple points to react but uh, some books mention that barbiturates are going to bind to the beta and gamma units of the GABA-A receptor. So when they bind what will happen? Very interesting point. So when barbiturates bind, before I mentioned this for the benzodiazepines, I'll now consider the same point for the barbiturates. When the barbiturates bind to the GABA receptor, it will increase the duration of this GABA A receptor. So what do you mean by increase in the duration? So when here, what will happen when the barbiturates bind? Then the channel will become open, and this opening will remain for a longer period of time. Example: If the GABA binds to the receptor, it will open the channel for five seconds. And if we take barbiturates, if they bind to the receptor, they will make the channel open for a longer period of time, more than 5 seconds. It may take 1 to 2 minutes. So that's how our barbiturates are doing their action. They are increasing the duration. And now again, I want to make people sure about the benzodiazepines, uh, comparing the barbiturates. Bi benzodiazepines are actually increasing the frequency and affinity. So what will happen? Then the benzodiazepines when bind to the receptor, then the GABA neurotransmitter will bind to the GABA receptor time and again and there will be opening, closing, opening, closing. But when barbiturates bind to the GABA receptor, then the channel of the GABA receptor will remain open for a longer period of time. There will be no closing opening like of the benzodiazepines. That's the very point. Benzodiazepines are closing and opening means frequency is observed thereby and in case of the barbiturates, there is increase in duration observed. That's clear enough, I think so. The next point is other drugs, other hypotics, and their side of action is the alpha-1. I told you people, when alpha-1 is stimulated, what will happen? Then we will feel sleep. These drugs are oftentimes indicated for insomnia. Now the point is dose-dependent mechanism of action. Dose-dependent mechanism of action. You know our sedative and hypotics, they are actually depending upon the dose. When we give in small doses, it will cause sedation. And when we increase the dose, it will cause a hypnoticity. And later on, some other effects might be seen. So here, I am just giving you the graphical representation for uh, the benzodiazepines and barbiturates comparison. On the x-axis, we have increasing dose. Uh, and on the y-axis, we have the CNS effect. So when we start from the small dose, it will cause sedation. As we increase the dose, hypnotic effect will be seen. Anesthesia, mild depression, coma, and death can be seen. Now you can observe the comparison between the benzodiazepines and barbiturates. The benzodiazepines have got a curve here. The reason behind is the way our benzodiazepines and barbiturates act. You know the way the, bar the benzodiazepines and barbiturates react, that is the very point to understand. The benzodiazepine, when they bind to the receptor, they cause the increase in the affinity and frequency of the GABA receptor for the GABA neurotransmitter. Then the GABA will bind to the receptor and it will cause opening and closing, opening and closing of the channel. And whereas barbiturates, when these bind to the receptor, they will cause increase in the duration of the opening of the channel. Means when the barbiturates bind, then the eye channel of for the GABA receptor will remain open for a longer period of time. So this is the main difference, okay? Barbiturates are causing the increase in the duration of the ion channel, means ion channel will remain open for a longer period of time, whereas benzodiazepines, they were causing the frequency, means they were opening and closing of the channel time and again. And the very next point that you must remember is that our benzodiazepine is dependent on the GABA neurotransmitter, whereas our barbiturates, they are independent of the GABA neurotransmitter. So they can react whether the GABA is present or not, GABA neurotransmitter. If the GABA is available, GABA will come and will bind to the receptor and will stimulate the receptor in the presence of barbiturates. And if the GABA is not available, is not sufficient, so then these barbiturates, they will show GABA mimetic activity, due to which this kind of graphical representation is seen. So now uh, benzodiazepines were dependent on the intrinsic GABA. So if GABA is not available, due to which they are causing a steeper curve. And whereas barbiturates, they were showing GABA mimetic activity. If GABA is available, they will show action. If not available, they will show the reaction also. So at a time, the barbiturates will bind to the GABA receptor. They will stimulate the receptor. And uh, in the same while, in the meanwhile, this barbiturates is helping the GABA as well as it is showing GABA mimetic also. So like this, what will happen? There will be a kind of increased effect observed as compared to benzodiazepine. So regarding sedative and hypnotics point of view, clinically, the benzodiazepines and uh, now uh, newer hypnotics, they are actually preferred clinically and they are safer as compared to barbiturates. So that's the very point I wanted to tell you people about the benzodiazepines and barbiturates.
Now, let's come to our last point that is the clinical use. Clinical use is quite obvious, you know, we are using these for sedation and haploticity. And the very point that uh, I want to increase is that nowadays we are using these for a sedative and haploticity effect, but uh, the barbiturates they are uh, preferred when it is about anesthesia. When it is about anesthesia. And we do have some other clinical uses also, but these are the prominent uses that I mentioned right now. And if still you have any kind of question, you can drop that in the comment box. We'll come for the answers very soon. Thank you for watching.